Hi, my name is Shazwan and this video is an introduction to flexible manufacturing system also known as FMS. manufacturing can be defined as a highly automated group technology machine cell which consists one or more processing station usually CNC machining station and it is interconnected by automated material handling and storage system and it is controlled by distributed computer system what made fms flexible so basically fms is suited for mid variety and mid volume production which ranging from 100 unit to 10000 unit per year we call it flexible system because it is able to process different part styles simultaneously at various workstation and the design and quantities of production can be adjusted according to the demand pattern of the customer and it is able to react quickly to the predictable and unpredictable changes, be it changes in the design, changes in the schedule, or changes in the production volume. There are four basic components of flexible manufacturing system. First, workstation. Second, automated material handling system. Third, human resources. And finally, computer control system. The first basic component of FMS is workstations. Type of workstation typically found in an FMS system are machining station, which usually CNC machines, which process the workpiece into desired shape. Load and unload stations on which the workpiece enter and exit the machines. Assembly stations or welding station, which join together the process workpiece. And the last one are the stations such as cleaning, inspection and painting stations. Material handling and storage system is the second basic component of FMS. Function of material handling and storage system are to provide movement of workpiece between workstation, handle variety of work part configuration, function as a temporary storage system, and also to provide convenient access to load and unload station. Material is usually transported to the workstation via conveyor system, expandable rail system, overhead gantry system, robotic arm system, and automated guided vehicle or also known as AGV. Human resources is the third basic component of FMS. It plan, manage, and provides the maintenance for the whole FMS system. It also performs the tasks that cannot be done by machine and require complex decisions which can't be handled by the computer system. In example, quality inspection. Human resources also provide the programming and plan for the operation of the whole system. Other than that, human is also required to load and unload the workpiece from the machine and perform the tool changing process. The final basic components of FMS is computer control system. It functions as an interface between human and other components of FMS, which is workstations and material handling and storage system. It also coordinates latest input by human supervisor. The computer system also controls the production, traffic, and movement of the shuttle to achieve desirable output. It also provides system performance monitoring and reporting. The computer control system also capable to conduct full diagnostic to the system. To qualify the manufacturing system to be defined as flexible manufacturing system, there are four questions that need to be asked. The first question is on the part variety test. Can the system process different part or product styles in a mixed model mode? And the second question is schedule change test. Can the system readily accept 
changes in production schedule and production quantities. The third question is error recovery test. Can the system recover gracefully from equipment malfunction or breakdowns so that the production not completely disrupted by the breakdowns? And the final question that need to be asked is the new part test. Can the new part introduce into existing parts with relatively ease? If we answer all the four questions yes, then we can define the system as flexible manufacturing system. If there is one no, so it is not fulfilling the requirement of flexible manufacturing system. Before we discuss on the history of FMS as a part of manufacturing advancement, let us go through briefly on the history of industrial revolution. First industrial revolution happened in 1784 when James Watt founded steam engine and mechanization is happening around Europe during that time. Second industrial revolution happened in 1870 when electricity was founded. This led to mass production and division of labor according to specific skill set. Third industrial revolution happened in 1969 when electronics, PLC and computer was founded. This led to automation of manufacturing line and utilization of robot in production line. Toyota manufacturing system is the famous system during this time. And now we are at the brink of fourth industrial revolution which is characterized by cyber physical system, smart factory and artificial intelligence. FMS was introduced in 1960 when intense market competition in the industrial world required a system that is more efficient and that can operate 24 hours without human operator. First, FMS was patented in 1966 by David Williamson, a British engineer working for a company called Molin. First concept was initially called System 24 due to its capability to run 24 hours a day on which 16 hours it can run by itself. Due to its advantages, the concept later on adopted by many companies like Ingersoll Rand, Caterpillar, Cincinnati Melacron and General Electric. Germany start implementing FMS in 1969 while Japan and Russia start implementing it in 1972. There are three types of FMS which categorize by the number of machines in the system. First, single machine cell, second, flexible manufacturing cell, and third, flexible manufacturing system. Single machine cell consists one machining center which connected to part storage system and it can load and unload parts to and from the storage system. It is designed to operate in batch mode, flexible mode, or combination of both. Flexible manufacturing cell contains two or three processing workstation plus part handling system which connected to load and unload station. It is readily adaptable to changing production schedule and volumes. New part designs can be introduced to the system with relative ease.
flexible manufacturing system contains four or more manufacturing station connected mechanically by common part handling system and electronically by distributed computer system. It includes advanced computer control system and supporting system such as measuring machine, storage station and tool monitoring system. Key differences between the three FMS systems are on the number of machines. In short, the more machines that the system have, the faster the cycle time of the product can be completed and the higher the total volume of product that can be produced. However, this also lead to higher investment to set up the system. Second table shows the differences between the three systems in terms of part variety, adaptability to schedule change, ability to recover from machine breakdowns and errors and ability to introduce new parts to the system all system shows that it is able to perform various parts at the same time except for single manufacturing cell which can only produce different parts in sequential mode and not simultaneously all system are also able to adapt to schedule change and able to produce new parts with new designs in terms of recovery from breakdowns and error only flexible manufacturing system is able to recover immediately. FMS sits in the middle line compared to other manufacturing system in terms of ability to produce various product and volume of production. FMS can be concluded as the most ideal manufacturing system to cater production that require mid volume and mid variety of product design. We can classify FMS layout into five categories. First, linear type or also known as progressive type. Second, loop type. Third, ladder type. Fourth, open field type. And finally, robot centered type. Linear type or progressive type is the simplest form of FMS layout configuration. The machine and handling system are arranged in a straight line where part progress from one workstation to the next workstation in a well-defined sequence. Workpiece always moving in one direction and no backflow in the system. The second type of FMS layout configuration is loop layout where the workstation are organized around a conveyor system or a part handling system in a loop form. Part usually flow in one direction around the loop with capability to stop and be transferred to any station within the loop. The third FMS layout configuration is ladder type layout where the workstation are located around a loop with cross section between the straight section of the loop. The cross section increase the possible path for the workpiece to move between the workstations and also reduce the travel distance of the workpiece. This system proved to be more flexible than loop type and linear type. Open field layout is the most complex FMS layout configuration. It consists multiple loops and ladders organized to achieve processing requirements. This configuration usually used for processing large family parts. Routing of workpiece is in multi-direction and complex sequence. Workpiece usually move between the workstations by using automated guided vehicle. The final FMS layout configuration is robot-centered cell where it used one or more robot as material handler to load and unload the workpiece into the processing machines. In this layout, the machine usually arranged in circular layout around the robot so it is easy for the robot to load and unload the workpiece to and from the machine.
FMS benefits its user in many ways. First advantages of FMS is it will maximize the machine utilization as it is a fully automated system. So the machine can run 24 hours even without human attention. Second, FMS can reduce the factory workspace as less floor area is required in this system compared to the traditional batch production. Third, the system have greater responsiveness to predictable and unpredictable changes. Fourth, FMS can reduce inventory requirement through a more efficient management of stock level. Fifth, fewer machine is required to run production as one machine is capable of doing multiple processes. Six, this system can lower the manufacturing lead time as this system minimizes the waiting time for the part to be processed at the machine. And since the material handling is automated, the part is transferred faster from the warehouse to the processing machine. Seventh, FMS proof to reduce direct labor requirement through utilization of robot and automated system. And finally, FMS create an opportunity for unattended production as the system is fully automated and it allows the system to run over a period of time without human attention. Although FMS have many advantages, there are few factors that need to be considered when we decide to implement FMS. First factor that need to be considered is the cost as FMS require high capital investment to set the system. FMS also require substantial and tedious pre-planning to run the system and the system also require highly skilled labor to set up and also maintain the system. And FMS is only suitable for group technology product. As for the conclusion, FMS is an ideal solution for the manufacturers who are looking for high efficiency and mid-volume production but require some sort of flexibility in its production. If the cost is justified, FMS will benefit manufacturers in many ways. Modern manufacturing world is moving toward the next step of industrial revolution, which is Industrial 4.0. This concept demands higher efficiency and greater automation in production. And FMS seems to suit the concept very well. Thank you very much.